Thank you, John, and the Leadership Fulfillment Committee. I am excited to see which of you joins the board. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to do some really, really good work. So, so thank you for considering it. Now is the time in the service where we share our joys and sorrows with one another so that they may be held in community. This is one of the ways that we live out and embody our covenant. As the music plays, I invite people in the sanctuary to come and light a candle of joy or sorrow if you have something on your minds or in your heart. You can write your joy or a sorrow on a card. There are cards on that table and on the wood table there. Um, and leave it in the basket if you, if you would like your sorrow or joy to be read aloud. For safety reasons, please leave your animal friends, whether they are alive or stuffed, uh, at your seat, especially if they're stuffed. And on Zoom, please use the chat feature to enter a joy or a sorrow that is touching your heart. Uh, no more than a sentence or two, please. You can also symbolically light a candle by typing lights candle or just LC into the chat. <laughs>
these are the joys and sorrows that were shared this morning. They're all joys again. <laughs> Gratitude and joy for the return home of Sharon Crust following a fall in severe vertigo with unstable hypertension. She's doing okay now. Poppy shares the joy that Amelia is now speaking in full sentences, which makes parenting paradoxically both easier and harder. <laughs> that is very true. Gobi Renner Payne recently turned six, happy birthday, and got a snake for his birthday, and it's still alive. <laughs> Paul and Ashley share the joy. They're celebrating 17 years of incredible and adventurous marriage today, and they met at a service in this sanctuary. <laughs> Mary Beth shares that she's thankful for her dog, Tilly. And Kathy Deweese shares that she is delighted to share that her 97-year-old mother, Audrey Dassler, is visiting for a few weeks, and Audrey is here with us today. Welcome, Audrey. <laughs> Though they may not be shared today, we know there are many more joys and sorrows that remain in our hearts and on our minds. As a beloved community, may we find ways to support those with both joys and sorrows. Let us pause now for a moment of quiet prayer or meditation, centering in the way that feels best to you. Spirit of life and love, what a joy it is today to celebrate our animal companions, those who make up our non-human family. And what a joy to be in a religious community that recognizes and celebrates the importance of these creatures in our lives. We have so much joy in this community, in this congregation today, that it is overflowing, and we are so grateful to have a place that we can celebrate our joys and that we can take our sorrows when they are on our hearts. We hold all this in our hearts together. Amen. And blessed be. Anyone of all ages prefer to be at the front for the words for all ages, you can join me now. But I also know there are people with their hands in some soul work who prefer not to move. And that's also fine. <laughs> you wanted to come up front? I heard that you were a very sociable person. Okay. So, I have a couple of things to say very briefly first. And one is that you might notice from my shirt that we're starting Banned Books Week. And it's really important. 
some of you know that there have been some efforts to keep kids from being allowed to read books written for kids by authors who know. Is it better if I just shut it off, y'all? I'm loud. No? Okay. Well, I apologize for the hissy fit that it is throwing. And if someone wants to give me a portable mic instead, that's also fine. Maybe if I, maybe if I hold it out here. All right. So if you are someone who has recently gone to public meetings and spoken out against book banning and stood against book banning, can you give me a sign? I feel like we've got a few people here. Yup. This is what I'm talking about. You've got young people doing ministry in our community right now and fighting book banning. <laughs> yep. If people who aren't in your family start trying to tell you what you can't read, be very suspicious and look for a cool sticker in your mailbox today. So, the second thing is, I don't want to miss the animal blessing, do you? So we're not singing out today. Yeah, we're staying in here. So, don't go for the door right after this, because we're not leaving. So here the story I wanted to share with you today. In the month of October, and believe it or not, it's October already. Yeah, the, it's the first day. It is the first day, but it took me by surprise. But in October, some Christians celebrate the life of a man named St. Francis. He was a kind man who lived in Italy a long, long time ago. And Francis grew up part of a rich family. But he came to believe that a lot of the things that were most important in life were not really about money. And so he chose to live a very simple life, which kind of reminds me of some other people we learn about in our sources sometimes. Francis particularly loved animals very, very much. He knew that even scary animals like lions or bears or wolves were really important to the God that he believed had created him and the animals alike. And so they were important to Francis too. And sometimes he even went outside and talked to animals just to kind of try to understand them better and to become their friend. Now, one time, Francis came to a town called Gubbio. And the people there had a big problem. A great, big, hungry wolf was eating their sheep. And a couple of times, it had even hurt a person who had tried to stop it from eating the sheep. So everybody was scared. And everybody was worried about their animals because, you know, they loved their sheep. And the parents worried about their children, which parents often do. And nobody went outside anymore. They were stuck inside all the time. Even the hunters were too scared to go after the wolf. Only Francis wasn't scared. Somebody needs to help these people, he said. I'm going to go talk to that wolf. Now, the people in the town were really excited that he wanted to go talk to the wolf. So they offered him their best hunting weapons and sturdy shields to protect him. But Francis didn't want any of that stuff. He said, I don't want to hurt him. I'm just going to have to trust the wolf. And I'm going to have to trust myself. And I'm going to have to trust to the higher power that I believe created us both. So the woman that knew best where the wolf was hiding led Francis to the cave where it lived, and Francis went inside. And obviously, at first, the wolf was really angry that Francis had disturbed his peace. And he said, who is this smelly weirdo in my cave? <sighs> he didn't even knock. Maybe I should make him my mid-morning snack. But as he crept toward Francis, getting, just like that, getting ready to pounce, the holy man suddenly started talking to him, which nobody else in the village had even tried. The wolf was surprised how gentle his voice sounded. Dear wolf, said Francis, I know that I look tasty, but if you eat me, you'll only get hungry again. Wouldn't it be better if you had food that lasted for the rest of your life? And the wolf agreed that this sounded pretty interesting, so he sat down and he perked up his ears like this. Well, when Francis saw that he had the wolf's attention, he kept talking. I'm here to tell you about the people of this village. They're very nice people, really. But 
if you eat all of their sheep, they will be hungry, and hungry people get cranky, just like hungry wolves. Everyone is so scared of you that they can't play outside anymore, and being inside all the time is super boring. Wolf kept listening. I mean, he wanted the people to have food and for the children to play outside, but he also needed to eat. What was he supposed to do? Francis thought about the problem, too, and then he had an idea. Hey, Wolf, he said, you're so strong and so brave that you would make a great protector for the village. If the people here promise to feed you, will you promise to guard the villagers and keep them safe? And the wolf agreed. Now, when the people heard about this plan, they thought Francis was like maybe a little bit too optimistic. Like, could this mean, scary creature really be their protector? But when they saw how gentle the wolf and Francis were with each other, they started to warm up to the idea, like very cautiously. The wolf had changed, and they were ready to change too. So they fed the wolf breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And in exchange, the wolf made sure that all the children and the sheep in the village were safe. And the wolf began to love the villagers. And the villagers loved the wolf, and the wolf was never hungry again for the rest of his life, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to go back over to the children's area and sit down. <laughs> Want to go with me? I know. You better hang on to those pictures for later, huh? Uh -huh. I'm just going to say a few words, and then we're going to bless the pets, because that's why we're here. My first love occurred when I was very young, but I think I chose pretty well for a five-year-old. Whenever I needed him, there he was, ready to snuggle with me and help me feel like everything would be all right. Though he was about five years younger than I was, it was a wonderful match from the start. Even today, I have special affection for pirates because of him. My love was my cat, Boo. How many of you was your first love uh, a, uh, an animal? Oh. He was a gray kitten when my father, who claimed to hate cats, brought him home for me when I was five. My dad was converted to Boo, that was his name, Boo's kittenish ways even faster than I was. And in fact, the whole family was. Kittens are fun. They're crazy, they're cute, and they're sweet. But as much as the rest of the family loved Boo, I knew that he was mine. He always made me feel loved and cared for. And I learned so much from him. When he came home one night and hid under the stairs, I learned that animals who are hurt and vulnerable often hide. They hide their vulnerability. And you know what? People do, too. When my parents got Boo out from under the stairs, they rushed him to the vet, who couldn't save his eye. This is how he ended up as a pirate. The vet said it looked like somebody had hit him. I learned that there are people who do very, very bad things in the world, and that most people are kind and helpful. But missing an eye never slowed Boo down, and pretty soon he was back outside enjoying life again. I learned that we can't let fear keep us from experiencing life. And when Boo ate my sister's parakeet, <laughs> I learned how hard it can be to love someone who does something kind of terrible and what it feels like to be caught in the middle of a really hard situation. During puberty and adolescence, when I often felt alone, Boo was there, curled up on the couch or on my bed, always trying to find that spot of sunlight and always ready for a good scratch under his chin or on his ears, but don't touch his belly. Boo also taught me about death. He was the first animal whose gentle death I participated in. He was in pain and suffering, and it was time 
And so we made that hard decision and brought him to the vets one last time. They didn't have people who come to your house to do this like they do now. I was in my mid-20s and had had him since I was five. It was the right decision, but that doesn't make it easy. It does bring some comfort, though. Pets, pets are often the first experience with death that children have, and how we guide them through the process will shape their lives for years to come. Bless my spouse's heart, he never had pets growing up. Three decades later, it would take some time to name all of the animals we have loved and nurtured over the years and that we have been with as they died. Like my father, John has been converted to the important role that animal companions play in our lives. Did you know research has shown that living with pets provides health benefits? They help lower blood pressure and lessen anxiety. They boost our immunity. Having a pet reduces our stress. They can both distract us and keep us present in the moment. And having a pet decreases loneliness and fears of isolation. They make great listeners. And they can help us when we need something alive to be touching us. Caring for a pet teaches us responsibility and reverence for life, and they give us something to focus our love and affection on, someone to nurture and more. And so how fitting is it that we honor St. Francis Day today and take some time to bless these animals who bless our lives? But before we bless the animals that are here with us today, let's take a moment to remember the beloved pets who are no longer with us. The loss of a pet or animal companion can affect us quite deeply. Let us take a moment of silence to acknowledge this loss and celebrate the love that we had for our animal companion. Beloved companions, whatever remains of your spirits are at peace and beyond all harm. As you were good, that goodness will be your guardian always. As you were loved, that love will attend you forevermore. May it be so. 